just so glad that you're here, man. So glad that you're here. I'm honored, honored, honored to be able to share the word. But we've been, if you're, if you're new here, I'm, my name is Rob. If we haven't met, I'm one of the pastors here. And um, we're in a series called Why Church? Somebody say, Why Church? Man, have you, ever, have you ever asked the question, why? Like, why church? Is it even relevant anymore? And when you think about churches, there's so many different churches. Did you know that every single week, every week, it's a sad stat. But 240 churches, or 60 churches every single, every single uh, week close, that's 240 churches every month that close. Is it even relevant anymore? When you think about church, what are some things that you think about? Fellowship, hey, I'm feeling that. Huh? A sanctuary, right? Worship, right? I mean, there's all types of, what'd you say? Faith, that's what's up. Yes, ma'am. Love, come on. Are you talking about our church? Are you talking about British church? Emotional support, yep. That's good. There's a, all, there's a whole lot of, yes, man, you got another one. You went with love. What else you going to go? Hope, let me guess. Family. Anybody, anybody appreciate family? But there's all types of, there's all types of churches. There's big churches. There's small churches. There's serious churches. There's charismatic churches. Anybody, anybody come from a Pentecostal, Pentecostal church? Anybody, anybody come from that type of background? Let me see. Lutheran churches. Uh-oh, we see that. I'm feeling that, Lutheran. Baptists. Have we got any Baptists in the, in the building? That's what's up. That's what's up. Hey, hey. Baptists. What else we have? Methodist, Catholic. Anybody come from a Catholic background? Come on. I love that. What'd you say? Presbyterian. Anybody pray? Anybody pray? But we have. Man, you, man I'm, I'm feeling that. But we got all types of churches. We got all types of churches, all types. You know, and uh, I've, had the, I've had the privilege, man. I, 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 didn't, I didn't grow up in church. Um, but, but, but I've had the privilege of, of visiting all types of different churches. And I love the body of Christ. I've been to Catholic churches. I've been to Baptist churches. I've been to uh, Church of Christ. Anybody from a Church of Christ background? Come on. A lot of churches. Which one is right? Oh! Hey, man, we say there's one church. There's one church, many different expressions. Man, all types of different flavors. Just like a family. Aren't you glad that all families ain't the same? I mean, everybody has a different way of running their household. And not one is better than the other. It's just different. And Bridge Church, we, we're a little different. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say, somebody say, we're a little different. But, 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 but real talk, real talk, like what's one of the, uh, what's, what's one thing, like why are you here? What's one thing that you love about this particular expression, huh? Friendly? Hey, do you believe that? You believe we friendly? That's what's up. Are you friendly? I know we friendly. Are you friendly? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. What else? Exciting? Acceptance. That's what's up, love. Energy? Oh, feeling that. What else? What else? Huh? Uplifting? I'm liking that. Somebody said diversity? Come on, don't you love diversity? Hey, this is all the Lord. This, 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 this is all the Lord. I, lo I love what you said. Diversity, man. We love celebrating different cultures, different people, different gifts. I'm so glad we all don't look the same. We don't think the same. We can learn from each other. It's like it's one of them things where they say, we ain't budging on that. This is who we are. We don't try to do diversity. This is who we are. Don't you like that? There's so many churches trying to do diversity. And it's like, man, it, it, it's tough. <laughs> but, if, but when it's who you are, it, 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 it's, it's a little bit more natural. But everybody's trying to be a diverse church. And they say in a year, what, what did they say, Pastor Ron, in a year, what, 20 40 or something like that? It's like if your church ain't diverse, it's going to be pretty much obsolete. Is that right? Something along those lines. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but I know, but everybody's talking about this, this diverse, diverse expression and how it, it is definitely a picture of heaven. It's one thing that, you know, we're just so grateful for about what the Lord has been doing all along at Bridge Church. 
I love it. It's a beautiful thing. But it's one church, many different expressions. And, and everybody has a different purpose. But when you think about, like, the different purpose of church, it's something about, like, loving God, right, helping people with their faith. Like, something about, like, loving people, loving the world, right? Like, helping people kind of grow, like, spiritually. Anybody grateful for that? But how many of y'all know it, it ain't just about growing spiritually? Like, I really believe, I truly believe, and we believe, like, the local church is the hope of the world. And it's the hope in your life. And, and it's not just about growing spiritually. It's mentally. Physically. Don't judge me. I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm going in the right direction. Still, Paul, I'm still proud of 300 Club. I'm going to get back down. I, I, I remember when I was like two, 225, you know, feeling, feeling good. I said, one day I'm going to get to that 300. And now I'm here. I can't, I, can't, I can't get back down to the twos. I'll be trying, though. I'll be trying. I'll be trying. I'll be trying. Where was I going? I forgot what I was about to say. <laughs> what did I just say? Growing spiritually. Yeah, physically, mentally, emotionally. Like, we need all that. Like, it's, it's all inclusive. And I believe what God wants to do is everything. He just doesn't want to help your spiritual life. It's everything. And that's what I really believe, that he wants, to, he wants us to be encouraged to grow in all those areas, to get healthy, to get whole. Anybody need some of that? Man, it's available. It's available only in Jesus and through Jesus. Only in Jesus. But, but if you was to like... If you was to like, 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 like squeeze Bridge Church out, just squeeze us out, and like, man, what is it that you guys do? All those things, all those things are, 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 are very true of what you guys said. So thank you for the kind words that you guys think about Bridge Church. But if you was to squeeze us out, the one thing that we are passionate about is change. Somebody say change. Change. We want to be a church known for change. Known for change. And it starts with us, changed lives. Like, I'm so grateful for what Christ has done in my life. So grateful that he's in the business of lives being transformed and changed. Is anybody grateful for that? Man, I don't know where I would be. I actually might know where I would be. Definitely wouldn't be here. That's the last thing I thought I would be doing, going into ministry. Like, you got to be kidding me. But change lives, change, 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 change lives. Every single time we get together, man, we say, man, Lord, change me. Give you permission to change me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mess. All of us should have a, have a, have a sign under construction. We all, are, we all are work in progress. Did you know there's no thing, such thing as a perfect church? You know why? Because you in it. Are you perfect? Are we perfect? No, but we a family, a beautiful family, a beautiful family. And I love that. I love that. I love that about our church. I love it. But change lives, man. Like, man, I could, we, could just, we could just talk the whole morning about that. What happens when we open up ourselves to Jesus, man. We just, we was talking about, we were just singing about his faithfulness and my heart, my heart, my heart will sing. No other name but Jesus, allowing him to get into your heart. It's about that. I love, I, I love that it's always been about Jesus. It's always been about Jesus. And I love just even the very foundation we talk about, we talked about how we were birthed from a nonprofit. Ain't that kind of cool? Like that's, like, that's not normal. 20 years out there serving the community. And then we said, you know what? Man, it's cool running these programs. It's great. Like, we're doing all types of programs. How many programs did we have at one time? Like 60? We had about 60 programs at one time. Whatever you could do. You ride horses, that's a, that's a ministry right there. It didn't matter. We had all types of different programs. But there's something about the church. They say, they say, man, we see these kids just kind of, kind of, they would, they would grow up, and they, and they would age out of the programs. And guess what happened? There wasn't really a whole lot of life change. They might have learned some life skills, which is great, 
But when we talk about life change, what we're talking about, we didn't see a lot of that because they didn't have a, a church. They didn't have a family. And we said, you know what, man, I know it's just a, uh, I love the story. Just a few little kids said, we want to go to church where you go to church. And they said, the reality is we go to different churches every single week. We don't really have a home church because we out there, I oh, mean, just so appreciate y'all labor, just going out, sharing the vision and trying to raise money so we can, can do what we can do. But we started church with a handful of kids. That's pretty cool. Then we was known as the youth church. Anybody know, anybody, anybody been there back in the day? The youth church. Nah, they just, they, just, they just walk by, oh, the youth church, the youth church. But it's always been about change. Change lives. And then you guys might have heard being out of the seats and into the streets. Like not being content with being inside these four walls. Like we, 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 we treat this like a, like a huddle. Like, like this is the pregame. Like we come, we come, we come, and... We hear a message, and we get inspired. We sharpen one another. Then we can go out and get in the real game. This has never been about just consumerism. And we do live in a world where there's a lot of consumer Christianity. There's so much. But there's so much more that I believe God wants to do, and he's doing a great work here at Bridge Church. He's doing a great work. So I want to get into... um, I want to get into his word this morning, but the Lord had put just something, like just on my heart, I was like, God, what, what is it? If there was one thing, one thing this morning that you would want us to, to leave with, I believe he's put something there. Because when I think about our relationships with God and maybe the church, I see it and Maybe five different places. Convenient. Anybody, anybody sometimes just kind of go to church or their faith is just when it's convenient for them? Let's just be honest. It's just convenient. Like, man, when, when it works out for me, I mean, if I, if I got something going on, then, then church kind of take the back seat, but, but just, just kind of convenient. We got convenient stores. We got convenient churches. I want church on my terms, convenient. And we go into relationships like this. The other one is casual. It's just like, it's, it's whatever. Like, man, God is cool. Me and cool. Me and Jesus, we tight. We cool. But it's just casual. There's really, there's really nothing else there. There's no depth to it. And then there's conditional. And this one breaks my heart. When you think about relationships, right? And I think about so many people get hurt by churches and hurt by people. It's like they say something, we do something, right? And then, and then we get offended, and then we go to another church and then until, until we get offended, and then we go to another church. It's conditional. The relationship's conditional until you meet my needs. Same thing in a relationship. The same, same type of deal. And then you got people who are committed, right? Committed, which is great. Think about commitment, but the world has a, def- a definition of commitment. And who likes Commitment. Nobody. Ain't nobody want to be committed because it's tough. It's like, man, I'm putting myself in. I remember, I remember my wifey right there. I love you, my wifey, my beautiful wifey right there, my boo. That's my, that's my heart right there. But I remember we were kind of, we was dating, right? And I didn't like that commitment word. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? <laughs> he put his hands up. I didn't like that word. I didn't like, I didn't like commitment. I didn't, I, I didn't like it. So, so, but I remember one time she gave me an ultimatum. I said, okay. I mean, she's a few years older than me, right? And she was like, basically she said, man, I'm tired of playing games with you, man. You're going to have to either grow up, man, be, or, or, or I'm gone. Like, I, I, she, said, she, said, she said to me, and I'll never forget it. She said, Rob, I can't even be your friend anymore. She said, because I know you're just going to continue to hurt me. But I know who I am, and I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be treated like this. So, so, amen. I know some of y'all, amen in that. (laughs) Amen. Go ahead, ladies. Y'all can go ahead and say amen. (laughs) Amen. Hey, fellas. Hey, y'all, ladies, y'all ain't off the hook either. 
Don't get it twisted. Some of y'all got, y'all, y'all don't like that word either. Fellas, can I get an amen? amen. Okay, okay, just to, just to know that we're on the same page. <laughs> don't get it twisted. But we don't like that commitment. But, but I will tell you this, like commitment b- based on our culture, I, culture has a word of commitment. That's why I don't, really, I don't really like it when it comes to faith. Because you know what? We can be in a relationship, right? And I can say I'm committed to you and you committed to me. It means I ain't got no other things on the side. But I'm not really doing it God's way. Somebody, okay, what you, where are you going with this? I'm just saying it's like, God, you're important. But we're in a committed relationship. And commitment from my perspective, on my terms, mean we can shack up. We can do whatever we want. At least I'm just faithful to you. Not saying, you know what, I am, I'm committed enough that I'm going I'm to put Christ at the center of everything. Okay, some people gave me a cook. So that's why I don't like that word because commitment, that's subjective based on your own experience. So that's why I believe there is another word called covenant. And that's including. That says, you know what? When I said I do to you, you said you do to me. It's a wrap. We in this thing together through thick or thin. This ain't no more. This ain't no more conditional. It's unconditional. We gonna, if we got some issues, we're going to work through it. And that's what I believe that God wants to do with all of us. And for you to experience everything that God has for you and for me to experience everything that God has for me, we have to get to this next level called covenant with him. So what what the Lord has put on my heart this morning, because I just see so many people five years, ten years going to church, but there ain't really been no change. No change. And there's so much grace for that. So don't, so hear my heart, there's so much grace. But why has there never been like those steps? What is it? The reality is you got some hurts and I got some hurts. And because we've been hurt, it's hard to let people in. So here's what the Lord had dropped on me this week as I felt like, man, we encourage the church. The purpose for our church, it's apparent what God has done for us. He sent his son, he baked up heaven, he sent the son, Jesus Christ, to live the life that we should have lived, die the death that we should have died in our place. And three days later, he rose from the dead, proving he was the son of God. And he offers forgiveness and salvation for those who choose to turn, not just turn physically, turning mentally, turn Physically, spiritually, everything. He, he said to turn, in other words, repent and, and believe in this message of the good news of the gospel. And we're going to look at the first church. The first church. I said, man, I think there's some things that we can learn from the first church that will inspire us to continue to live this thing out. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Sorry, it's taking a long time to get into the word. But I, can we just stand up? I know y'all might already be a little bit tired, but, but stand up for us and we're going to read the word together. How to go to covenant. Here we go. There's a few different scriptures. First John, this is powerful. Let's read this together. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. Powerful. How we love one another. How, 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 how you and I do this life thing together. It says his love is perfected when we do this together. It's a beautiful thing. Next scripture, Hebrews 10, it says this. Let's read this together. So now we must cling tightly to the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promises. Discover creative ways to encourage others and to motivate them towards acts of compassion, doing beautiful works as expressions of love. This is not the time to pull away. Listen up closely. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing. Because we need each other. Somebody say that again. We need each other. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward 
as we anticipate that day dawning. The world said, you know what, have it your way. God says, the scripture says, no, it is vital that we come together. It is vital because I need you and you need me. So we're going to pray and then we're going to go in the book of Acts and we're going to look at the first church. But God, thank you for your word. It's alive. It is alive. We give you permission to change us. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, sit down. Thank you so much. So I want to go to the book of Acts. Those are just a couple verses that kind of highlight it, and I just really want to go to the book of Acts real quickly because it's, it's, it's important to understand what were some of these things that they were committed to. What did they do in order to achieve the start of the church, to see this church spread all throughout history? What was it? So you got to start with Peter. So you guys know Pastor Josh, he talked about how they were all together, the disciples were together. And then 120 of them, they were, they were in the upper room and the Spirit of God came on them. Y'all remember this? The Spirit of God that filled them up with the Spirit, right? And then they sent them out, right? And then, and then, and then, and then Peter, Peter, one of uh, Jesus' disciples, one of who was close, the same Peter who denied Jesus three times. The same Peter, the same Peter that Jesus says, you know what, on you, this rock, this revelation, I will build my church. That Peter, that Peter. So this was, this was Jesus speaking to Peter at one time, and now here is the beginning and the birth of the church. Peter basically, he, he called them out in a loving way, I think. But one of the greatest sermons ever preached, I believe the best sermon ever preached was, was Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and now this Peter's, Peter's sermon. So you got to think there's crowds, 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 people who, who was there when Jesus, they saw Jesus, they were there when they were crucifying him and they were calling them names and all of that. These were the same people. And Jesus addresses, or Peter addresses the crowd. And he says this, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to, the, to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? What shall we do to be saved? After Peter says all of this, and he's like, man, that, church, that Jesus that you crucified, that you did, that you put on the cross, man, he's alive. And he is the Messiah. And they said they were cut to the heart. When was the last time we were cut to the heart? Based on the finished work of Christ, when was the last time that moved us, not just here, but to our heart? And Peter has to reply. He says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord, our God, will call. Powerful. So you get the picture. Peter addresses the crowds, right? 3,000 of them get saved right after that. He said, what should we do? And then go on to the next verse. With many words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. How many of y'all know? Let's just be real. Man, our culture, man, it, it, it's, going, it, 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 it's, it's saying something. It's moving a particular place that's probably not in alignment with God. Can anybody just say, yeah, I'm feeling that? All right, just, just want to make sure we're on the same page. Okay? So, so he said, those accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000 after he preached. Now, here's what they did. You got to think, these are people from all types of different backgrounds. All types of different backgrounds. And then this is what they said they did. He said this, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together. Somebody say together. Together. Had everything in common. We can stay there. No, let's keep going. I like it. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Listen, 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 listen to how often they got together. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. The Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. That was normal Christianity. That was normal. That wasn't radical. That was normal. And there are a few things that I just feel like, man, um, that we can take home with us as we try to live this thing out. Number one, it says they, 
they, they, they committed themselves. These are four things they committed to, to the apostles' teaching. God's word. You see, there was, there was something powerful about, about when they got together in a kind of a crowd like this. That they would go and they would come to receive from whoever it is that, that was going to be bringing the word that day. So somebody would go and, and man, I'm so grateful. I learned so much from Pastor Josh, someone who, who I believe is one of the best preachers and communicators that, that, the, that we have in the city. But I've learned so much from him in a way that he studies the word, in a way that he how much effort and time that he puts toward preparing a sermon. And I'm learning, I'm learning. I got a lot of learning to do, a lot of growth to do, but I'm learning like so much effort goes into trying to come up with something to hopefully feed everybody. It's not easy. It's hard work. It's hard, but I've learned, but they committed themselves, they devoted themselves to God's word in a public gathering like this. And then what I love, this is they went back to their own homes. So when, 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 when we're in a setting like this, it's like, man, I believe that I have something to say, not because I'm anything special, but because God has made, gave, gave me an assignment to share something. So in a setting like this, like, man, y'all listen to hopefully um, that I have something to say, something that would help bring you some value. But then they would go home and they would take the words and then, and then they, and they would gather in small groups and then they would, they would, they would, they would, they would, they would share with each other what they, what God was doing in their hearts. So we got the big setting and then they got the small gathering and said, no, he has something to say, but here's what I have something to say. God's doing this in my life. Man, we had our men's breakfast yesterday. It was off the chain. It was powerful. It was powerful when we got together. It was powerful because you know what? You get to hear from other people, man, this is what God is doing in my life. This is what he's doing. It's powerful. So they committed themselves to, to the teaching. It's powerful. And can I just say, like, there's some of the most incredible, like, with technology, man, technology has, has put us in a bad spot, G. Because I know what y'all about to do. Y'all going to go home and listen to Stephen Furtick. Y'all going to go home and listen to the Bishop T.D. Jakes. Y'all go ahead and listen to the best speakers in all the world. And y'all going to compare them to us like, man, I'm a, I, this is how I'm going to do church. I don't blame you because they are a lot better than us. But here's what I would say. There is something that God is doing in this house that I believe that we have to, we have to. You can learn from everybody. I'm not saying don't learn from everybody. But God has given us a, spe a specific mission and calling. He's given something to us. And as like we talk about being a family, that we got to, we got to lean into what he's saying here. Because he want to do a specific thing here through us. So I just think it's important. It's important that we, we do this. But they committed themselves to the teaching. The next one was fellowship. Oh, I love this word. The Greek word, koinonia. Yeah, I sound smart? No, you don't. You're like, this brother faking. <laughs> but fellowship, it was, it was shared. It was, it, was, it, was, it was this idea of not just fellowship and just hanging out. It was with the purpose to, to spur each other to, towards good deeds like for Christ. That's what it was. It was, it, was, it was that type of fellowship. That's what they did. We ain't just kicking it. We kicking back with Christ. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what, man. I mean, oh, man, we having Bible study. Okay, cool. That's great. So I go in. What y'all doing? Y'all talking about everything else but the Bible. Not everybody. I'm just saying. But I'm just saying, in, 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 but for real, for real. It's like, man, we're doing fellowship for the sole purpose of spurring each other toward Christ. That's what they did. That's why they were together. Breaking bread, they, they shared meals together. They, they, they shared communion together. They, they had, oh, I'm looking at you right now. Coming to your house, breaking bread with you. Come on, you are the greatest cook. Come on, you are awesome. But they being able to come to your house and break bread with you. We weren't really talking about God, but it was like, man, it was, it was building relationships. They had to do it. And finally, they committed themselves to prayers. Not prayer, prayers. It was ongoing. That's what they did. That's what they did, and I believe that's something that I believe that God wants us to do. We, ha we have to, we have to fight. I'm talking about tooth and nail to come and make this stuff a priority. The gathered church, that is the most powerful force. I mean, if you go back to even like some of these other, other places where they're not able to speak freely, like China. I've been to China. 
We had, we had somebody preaching the word, man, but we had guards on the back because they can be killed. But they said, man, you can do that on your own, but just don't gather together. You can, I don't care about your faith a separate, but if you, just don't, just, if you just don't gather together. That was what they were afraid of, of them getting together. So what do we do here at Bridge Church? How do we go about living this thing out? Obviously, we've got our own little culture. We've got our own little flavor. We want to we model our lives. We said, you know, we're a church known for change. That's, that's at the heart of who we are. I want to see your lives change. My life continue to change. Right? But how do we do it? How do we do it? We got to fight together. We have to do this together. I want to call on a couple of my brothers real fast. Come on, come on up here. Reese, come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up. Morel, come on up here. Real fast, real fast. This is the beauty of relationships and the power of doing stuff together. Can y'all give it up for them real fast? All right. I'm so sorry. We run it. Keep it quick, G. Keep it quick. So, great topic. I mean, you know, why church? And it was when I was uh, just outside riding, and I heard, why do you go to church? Come in, the topic said, why church? And then it was when we had a, a little dinner, and Morel here, it was like, he was doing, he was below zero is what I say. Mm. And um, I remember my below zero moment. Come on. Is when Bridge Church stepped in, and, and uh, I truly believe that the gap between where I was at, at potential level, and really living out my purpose was the people in the church. Mm. And uh, I believe God brings people into our lives to help us discover our purpose. I truly believe that. And, and that's when I was connected to Morel. Yeah, so for me, uh, it was just um, different for me to start accepting help. Mm. Start embracing help. Um, it was something so different for me. But one thing I learned within these past few weeks, my 15-year-old self was afraid of it. But my 31-year-old self ain't afraid to take the leap. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So I want to thank him and his wife. Yeah. Steve Foster and Hathie. Yeah. Forever. I love y'all. Mm. Bridge Church, I love this togetherness. Yeah. It's great. Come on. Thank y'all. Come you. on. Appreciate you. Love you, man. Appreciate you. They were able to share a little bit more, um, but it was so powerful at the men's breakfast about how both of their stories were so similar. And they were in a similar spot. And he said, you know what, man, sometimes it's, it's, it's the people that connects us to, to ultimately fulfill his purpose. And I know we're not the best church. I know that. Thank you. <laughs> but I love our church. I love the foundation of this church. I love the heart of this church. I love at the end of the day, we want you not just to think more like Jesus and know more about him. Oh, we want you to look like him too. We want you to love like him too. And I truly believe as we commit to doing these things together, together, and we start to learn and sharpen one another, that you and I will look more like Jesus. Because there's a lot that I know I, I can learn from you, and I know there's some things that you might be able to learn from me as well. But when we get together, when we commit to his teaching, his word, fellowship, breaking of bread, praying for one another, when we commit to those things, I tell you what, could you imagine what, number one, your life would look like and my life would look like? Could you imagine what this church could look like? Could you imagine what the city would look like? It's a beautiful thing. But we have to go, we have to go from being casual and this conditional thing, 
even in the world that, that, that says, you know, he talks about commitment. But it always starts with being in covenant with him until he is the center of your life. Until he is the center of my life, none of this will make any sense. I love what you shared, Jan. Put in him first. I'm not going against what you said, but I remember uh, somebody said, man, don't put God first. I said, what you talking about? He said, put him in the center. Put him in the center of your relationships. Put him in the center. Put him in the center of your hopes and dreams. Put him in the center. Put him in the center of your struggle and your, and, and your sin. Put him in the center. Put him in the center of your relationships. Put him in the center of your finances. Put him in the center of your time. Put him in the center of your work. Put him in the center of your basketball. The center of whatever it is that you do. Put him in the center. When you put him in the center, and our job is we want to do everything that we can to help push both of us, all of us, to the center, making him being pushed in there. It's a powerful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So three things that we do, you might have heard it before. Somebody say gather. Man, make it a point. They say, you know what? Most people, they go to church once every six weeks. And that's what they call, man, and they call that, that's church, that's their church home. And I get like culture and sports and all that stuff. But you have to make it a point to gather. Grow. Commit to daily Bible reading. Man, I don't know if you journal, but one thing that's helped me is something called the SOAP method. SOAP stands for Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. SOAP don't work when it's just in the shower. You got to use that thing. <laughs> you feel me? If you feel me, you got to use it. So it's not just good enough just to hear the word. You got to apply the words just like that. So I do think it could help. But, but boy, joining a connect group, like get, get in community. Get in community with somebody. And we have those coming up. And then go. Man, I'm excited about this. Man, we're so serious about getting out of the streets that we say, you know, we're shutting this whole celebration down. Because we want everybody to experience getting out. But I will say this. If you want to come at 10 o'clock on that Sunday, we are going to be gathering. We're going to have some food. We're going we're gonna to be breaking some bread, share communion together. Again, just know that that is going to be available on that particular date. It's not going to be a word, but it's just a time to connect with people. Sometimes it's hard when you're looking at the back of somebody's head the entire celebration. But we want to look people in the eye. We want to connect. We want to get to know each other. When we do that, man, we got to lean into it. We got to lean into it. Let me pray. But God, thank you so much for your word, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in, in the lives of, of all of us. Thank you for what you're doing in this church, God. And God, I just pray that you would just continue to help us. Help us take these principles to the heart. God, I pray. I pray when we look back and we see when Peter, when he preached, and he said it was cut to the heart. God, would you break our hearts for what breaks your heart? And would you give us the courage to repent? Not just turn around, but a complete change of everything that we do. But we know when we do that, you give us your Holy Spirit. So God, would you help us do that? Help us be like the first church, man. We love you. We praise you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I, 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 I appreciate the claps, but I'm for real. Like, if you want to live out everything that God has for you, these are non-negotiable. They're absolutely essential. I know that there's a, a picture. Can I just show that real fast, and then we'll go, of a fire. And this is what I felt. This is, this is the picture that I saw. Like, in order to stay hot, you got to stay close to the fire. I just felt like, man, they have, when you, when you, when you remove a coal from the fire, what happens? And, that, and I just felt like that all over our church, y'all. 
not that you do it intentionally, but I just felt like, man, so we need to gather. We need to do this stuff together so we can stay on fire for him, okay? God bless you guys. You're amazing. Hey, before you, can y'all stand up real fast? Stand up real quick. Man, love y'all, man. Love y'all. Hey, before you go, high five three people. Listen, if you need prayer, listen. If you need prayer, one of the first things is just acknowledge you need some help. If you need prayer, we'd love to pray for you. God bless you. Thank y'all so much.